Welcome to this PalmSense video. Today we're going to answer the question, what is a potentiostat? Maybe you've just started with electrochemistry and everybody's throwing around that word and you just want to know what it is. And well, I'm already surrounded by potentiostats and they're all different. So what do they have in common? What do they do? Well, let's have a look at the different types of instruments you can encounter doing electrochemistry. Well, the first one is, of course, the potentiostat, and that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, the potentiostat um, lets you control the potential of your reaction and measure the current that is resulting from that. Uh, another device um, like this is the galvanostat, and it kind of does the opposite. It controls the current and it measures the potential while the frequency response analyzer does something very different. It applies a sine wave shaped potential and measures the sine wave shaped current reply back and then records the impedance and phase shift. Um, these three devices are used for different applications. Um, the potentiostat is used, for example, in analytical chemistry to control the potential and this way select a certain reaction and then the current response is usually correlating with, for example, the concentration of the analyte you're interested in. You can also use it for other things, for controlling corrosion, etc. Um, galvanostats are especially interesting if you want to deposit a, an, a fixed amount of substance because that correlate, correlates with a charge and if you have a constant current, it's very easy to calculate the charge. Also, the same is true for battery applications. This is why battery experts like to charge their batteries uh, with a constant current. The frequency response analyzer is used for electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, a rather advanced electrochemical technique that's very surface um, sensitive, so it really likes to um, be, um, it can be really used for label-free techniques or maybe for checking coatings. Okay, so now you have an overview of what are the different instruments. So um, now what will be the first thing you will notice about a potentiostat that makes it so special? Well, when you take a potentiostat and you want to connect it to your experiment, you find that it has three electrodes. Okay, so let's have a look at that, because in your mind you might think like, hmm, shouldn't be the left situation be sufficient? Uh, two electrodes should be fine, right? That's enough for a current to flow. Why does a potentiostat have three electrodes? Well, we have three electrodes because we need a working electrode, which is the electrode where the electrochemistry is happening that we're interested in, where we want to apply a potential and then measure the current that's flowing there. Then we have a reference electrode, and that's the extra electrode compared to the two electrode setup, because this electrode is supposed to provide a constant potential throughout the experiment. To do that, no current should flow through the reference electrode, and we introduce for that purpose the counter electrode where a current is then flowing. That has the advantage that when electrochemical reactions are happening, and uh, these lead to a change of the environment of the electrode. This isn't happening at the reference electrode, so we do have a constant known potential at the reference electrode, and basically we always know where our working electrode is on the electrochemical series, and we can precisely control it. Another nice effect of this is that the current that we measure is only influenced by effects on the working electrode if your experiment is done properly. So it reduces the parameters we need to look at. Um, if you're wondering how this looks in real life, I have here a few electrodes for you. Right, they're basically two big groups of electrodes. We have the classic ones that are really three separate electrodes. We have the working electrode with a very defined metal surface. We have the counter electrode, which has usually a really large surface because, well, its only task is for a current to flow. And we have the reference electrode, which brings even its own solution with it. And then there's a frit here that I have here still with a protective cap on because I don't want it to dry out. So that one is the one giving the constant potential. And you would place them in like a cell like this, for example, and place solution in there and do your measurement. Another option 
are um, screen printed electrodes, which is for ex have, for example, here on a plastic sheet, they have um, the three electrodes printed on. You see here in small and silver, the reference electrode in round in the middle made from gold, the working electrode, and also a gold counter electrode as this arc at the side. This has the advantage you can like just put a droplet on it and do your measurement or just throw them away afterwards. So now you have an idea what the three electrodes are and exactly you already have an idea what a potential stat is. But up to now, just controlling a constant potential sounds a bit boring. So let's see what else a potential stat can do by controlling the potential. Well, first it can do what we already talked about. You have a constant potential and then maybe you look at the current over time. So you look for changes. Maybe you add an analyte to your solution and you want to see how the current is changing. Or maybe you have a flow system and your analyte is flowing by your electrode and you want to see how the current is changing. Other techniques are potential dynamic techniques where you do, for example, a linear sweep of your potential over time. So you change your potential in linear fashion. This has the advantage that you can scan all these potentials and see where suddenly current peaks are happening and you know at these potentials reactions are happening and then you can try to correlate that with the species that are in solution and try to learn when which reaction is happening so you can control them. Um, a bit more advanced techniques are pulse techniques where you change rapidly the potential to overcome diffusion limitation, increase the sensitivity, etc. And the last group that I would like to mention here again, we've mentioned them in the beginning, is the um, AC techniques where you apply a sine wave and measure sine waves. This is usually used, as I say, for impedance spectroscopy. Nowadays, actually, most potential sets are combined devices, like, for example, our PalmSense 4 or MSTAT 4, and actually most potential sets are also galvanostats and frequency response analyzers. So it will be easy for you to find a device that can do everything. Now, well, I hope you have now a good idea what potential stats are. And if you liked this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any videos. Also follow us on LinkedIn, then you don't miss any of the updates that we're making there. So thanks for watching and have a great day.